Hey folks, Brian here making a, a new video, update video. I've got some interesting uh, news to report. Uh, some people find it interesting, uh, you know, good or bad, however you want to look at it. Um, make the video uh, speedy and get through the video. Um, I've had this car four years. It's a 3.0T, uh, Infiniti 3.0T Q50 rear wheel drive signature edition um, i've had it four years uh, in july it'll be four years and so uh, i need to tell you a little bit of story about why i'm making this video the point of the video uh, we're we're in a, in a major heat wave in june uh, and so no telling what july august is going to be like here in dallas texas or texas in general or the south um, we're in a hundred plus degree weather uh, and it's it's really terrible and humidity is always very very high but uh, I was out driving my car as pretty much kind of this heat wave hit and uh, I didn't think my air conditioner was uh, pumping out uh, as cold as air as it should. I'm just from my memory of, you know, back maybe when it was brand new. I just, I don't use my air a lot. I actually don't physically drive this car a ton. Um, so uh, I, ha I, I keep it in a garage and it stays in there a lot and I just, uh, you know, take care of the car. But I was out driving in uh, like 103 degree heat and I, I cranked up my air and I was like, that's not blowing cold enough. So I was like, I need to schedule an appointment and take this car into infinity and get that looked at. I was like, my warranty, you know, I didn't remember if it was a four year, five year warranty. The mileage doesn't matter because I'm not putting high miles on my car. So it's more of a year concern. So four years. So I take it into my service rider and let me tell you a little bit more about what happened. So I take it into Sewell Infinity here in Dallas, Texas, and uh, there's a couple of different Infinity dealerships you can take to, but uh, I've kind of learned now through taking it to, to some different dealerships that uh, Sewell Infinity near Love Field in Dallas is in Highland Park, the kind of the, the high end part of one of the high end parts of Dallas is where from now on, if I ever need any service that I'm, I'm taking my service because it's just such a great, great dealership tons of people work there and everyone's professional in suits and it's just a high-end dealership so uh, i felt a little bit better about dropping my car off to have service done because like myself if i'm sick i stay away from the doctor unless i feel like i'm possibly dying uh then you know or my life or my my health is in in serious risk then i'll go into the doctor same thing with my car uh, minor things wrong with it, you know, I, I'll try to fix it, you know, but I'll live with a lot of things until it gets to the point where I got to take it in. So, uh, but I had a really good experience with Sewell, but uh, I talked to my service advisor moving on in, into the video. Uh, I talked to the service advisor, told him about my air conditioner. He uh, felt it, came out to my car, looked at it and put his hand up, turned it up, you know, kind of sat in there and was like, yeah, it could be t could be t uh, excuse me potentially be something that we need to fix here. So I was like, oh gosh, uh, you know, and, and it, later on he told me it could be some, uh, the mechanism up in the dash. And I was like, oh, sheesh. Taking, I was like, you're gonna have to take my dash apart to get to that. And he was like, yeah, they're gonna have to dismantle almost the, you know, your interior. And I was like, oh, in my head, I was like, nothing, you know, gets put back. You know, when you take something apart after it's away from the factory, it never gets, gets put back like it is done at the factory in its original state. But long story short, they didn't have to do that. They ran some tests on it. They, you know, stuck a thermometer in there, ran the car while it was in the dealership and determined that it was blowing 58 degrees within spec of infinity for the air conditioner. So didn't have to tear my, my air conditioner or my dash apart. But here's the point of the video that I want to get to real quick. And um, let me go tell you what, it, what that is right now. All right, while I had it in service there, which I do not like to go to the dealerships because they are such so difficult to get to with Dallas traffic. I mean, it, like I said, the car's got to be in bad shape for me to take it in. But I took it in, and, uh, and so while I was in there, and he, you know, I was like, I don't know when my warranty ends. And he was like, well, let me look it up in my computer, you know. And he typed it in there, and he was like, man, your warranty expires next month in July. I bought it in July of 2019. So four years later, four years of ownership. Uh, and he was like, is there anything else you want us to look at? You know, just to make sure everything's situated. And I was like, uh, 
I was like, I've, I've got this uh, wastegate rattle, and this is what the video is primarily about. I, I've got this wastegate rattle, you know, when I started up, and it's been like this for like two and a half years, maybe three years. I mean, it started, and it's just at startup. When you a cold start, uh, start the car in the morning, I mean, you get this excessive rattle, and it's only for about five seconds, and then once the actuator in the ECU goes through its cycle and it tightens up or, or you know the uh, wastegate it goes away so it was just not a big deal i could live with it uh i, I it wasn't affecting the per uh, performance of the car and i i didn't i never really would ever want to have infinity you know drop my motor out of the car and take the turbos out that's like that's like heart surgery you know but but in the end i was like man my warranty's coming up you know i was like you know just thinking in my head what what does it hurt if they you know put brand new turbos in the car and uh, and then you've got brand new turbos to go on to the you know with the future for the next three four years uh if you keep the car that long and uh and you have a little bit more peace of mind so i was like yeah you know let's do it let's have the technician look at it so uh, long story short the technician had it for a day drove it um, and then I get the phone call and he was like, Mr. Thornhill, we have determined that uh, there's enough evidence that we could replace your turbos for you under warranty. Would you like us to do that? And I was like, I was like, you know, I thought about it for a second. I was like, yeah, you know, go ahead. You know, you know, that's the best dealership to do it. It's where I bought my car. So uh, and I just want to report uh, how it performs afterwards and the experience that I had. OK. So now having the car back, you know, three or four days, um, I had, it was a pretty amazing experience that Sewell did. And I just want to report that they had to get some parts in because there's a lot of uh, little extra things they have to do besides the turbos, you know, seals and different things that they had to get in. And uh, it took a day to get some of those in. So the next day, and, uh, and they did this swap out phenomenally, I mean, in like, three-fourths of a day I mean at the end of the day it was ready to go they uh, also you know dropping the subframe down uh, with the motor attached to it where they lift the car up uh, you know independently of the motor still sitting there unbelievable that this happens uh, but they have to d disconnect a lot of things and so they put new uh, you know new uh, radiator and, and coolant in the the uh, coolant system they did, they had to do a uh, wheel alignment because a little bit of difference of putting the subframe back in there, you know, uh, a wheel alignment, and they recommend doing a wheel alignment every 15,000 miles anyways. Uh, so I got a wheel alignment and the car, I had to get it inspected because my expense and inspection expires uh, in this, the end of this month, which is right now. So they did all this stuff in like three fourths of a day and then had it ready to go uh, the next day. And I was really, really impressed. Everything looks, I've really looked over the car. I've washed it. Everything appears to be uh, almost 99% as close to how I dropped it off. I keep my car unbelievably clean and it's such a major pain in the butt. Uh, the, the amount of detail and attention that I put to keep this car clean, scratch free, dent free, um, window shield chip free, paint chip free, it's just, it's painful uh, and so uh, I you know I don't want to drop something off and get it back and and have damage to it scratches or scuffs or whatever interior or exterior so they Sewell did a, a really good job so I'm really um, really appreciative of them doing that and I've got new turbo so let me get to you real quick like I promised and tell you about uh, the experience of driving the car um, I don't have data to verify this information, but I think, I mean, the turbos seem to uh, kick in a little faster, the boot builds boost a little, a little better. I, I can't verify that. I, I don't have the data again that shows that. It just may be in my mind or my, you know, by the seat of my pants. Um, yay, nay, plus, minus, I, you know, I would say I feel like it's a plus that I went ahead and did that. And I mean, it just seemed like a no brainer. Um, you know, and I don't think that that's a knock against Infinity, you know, per se. I mean, the wastegates with these Garrett turbos, they're just not as, uh, this is a $45,000 to $50,000 car and not a $70,000 car.
a seventy thousand dollar car uh you know and, and more expensive cars would would have a, a upgraded turbo you know a ball bearing turbo or a more uh, a more costly turbo uh in there and so the uh, turbo actuator the uh that controls the waste gates uh it just hollows out because the waste gates i mean when you're driving this car you know a uh, hundred times a second or you know maybe not that much you know 10 times a second the waste gates are getting information to open the waste gates and so they're moving and and they're they they wear out and it's just not a not as a well-built high-end turbo as you would get on maybe some other cars that are more expensive and, and equipped with higher grade turbos i mean it's not really a knock against the car they just have to make these you know within a range of affordability and uh, and that's how i was able to get it and so i'm i'm pleasantly uh you know surprised that the car drives as well and does as, as well as it has and so i'm thoroughly in love with this car and uh potential to keep it another three years you know who knows but uh, the car uh, everything's great so i just wanted to bring this video to everybody and share my uh experience uh, I just I still can't believe you know uh, how difficult <laughs> it is to get to these turbos per se you know and even add in lower down pipes is pretty difficult to, to install on these cars but uh, let me just finish with something real quick so yeah, I'm always a big preacher proponent of uh, talking about oil catch cans and uh, and I've done a lot of research over the years uh, about this Mishimoto uh, oil catch can vapor blow by catch can and just the last two times that I've changed this, and it, and it hasn't been excessive oil changes because I changed my oil about every three, 3,500 to 45, 5,000 miles. It's usually between three and four, uh, but uh, I'll change my oil out. Hey, but I check my oil catch can about, uh, you know, 500 miles. And, you know, when it starts to, you know, get a certain level, I'll just uh, dump the oil out. It's very easy to do. And so let me bring that into you. Uh, the oil level is right up there. That's two, two oil, uh, you know, container full of dumping that out. And otherwise that oil and the vapor uh, and the water that's in that, the moisture would go straight in the little uh, out of the uh, crankcase into the uh into the throttle body or just after the not the throttle body but into the intake and my intake valves and it would go and coat my intake valves and that would dry up from the high uh high heat and turn to carbon and then you get this really ugly intake uh you know uh, intake valve and the the intake portion of of, of the heads there you it just really gets and it hurts performance it hurts your gas mileage it makes the car run rougher uh, and it, uh, it, you lose a little bit of performance because of the air not being able to fully flow in smoothly and then get into the combustion chamber. Plus two, it can get so bad if you don't deal with it that your valves won't completely, uh, won't be completely shut. Uh, and that could be a major problem, you know, but that's with higher mileage cars, you know. Uh, but very important to, I think, get an oil catch can and I did uh, got mine right when the car was brand new, maybe 400 miles on the car. So I know I've got uh, pretty clean intake valves. And so very important. But other than that, thanks for tuning in. Uh, check back for more videos or just, you know, keep staying tuned, tuned into my channel and, uh, and I'll produce some more videos for everybody. Okay. Thank you and have a great day. Hopefully you're staying cool where you are because it's really hot here.